on the marsh boardwalk side of the Frink Centre Conservation Area, where you'll see a forest dominated by coniferous trees. Coniferous trees are those that have needles instead of broad leaves and produce cones instead of seeds. To help you recognize some of the species that you'll find on your walk here, we're going to go and identify a few of the common coniferous trees at the Frink Centre. The tree behind me here is a white spruce. So our white spruce can be identified primarily using the needle. So the needles of the white spruce are about two centimeters long and they have a bluish green hinge to them. Now the white spruce has a cousin, the black spruce, which looks very similar. And it's a little hard to tell, but the way you can tell the difference is looking along the edge of the twigs in between the needles. If it's slightly fuzzy, then it's a black spruce. If it's smooth and hairless like this one, then it's probably a white spruce. The shape of the white spruce tends to be somewhat like a Christmas tree, as in it's a bit of a conical shape, but as it ages, it tends to become more of an even shape from top to bottom. You can find white spruce in a wide variety of habitats, but here in Southern Ontario, you can often find them in plantations that were made by humans, or in areas that tend to be a little bit wetter, like along the edge of a wetland. The bark of the white spruce tends to take on a scaly looking appearance as the tree ages. And often there's sap that leaks out from the side of the tree. This could be damage from broken branches, it could be perhaps from animals like a woodpecker, or even just from an infection. The tree right here is a balsam fir. So balsam firs look a little bit like spruce, but unlike spruce, the shape of their, the way their needles are arranged is a bit different. So on balsam fir, you can see that the needles tend to go out kind of sideways and make even a little bit of an X shape. Now on spruce, which looks a little bit similar, the needles tend to curve upward and the, the twig looks a little bit round in arrangement. So you can see them here side by side. The balsam fir is very flat and the spruce has upward curving needles. The needles on the balsam fir also tend to be more of a green, whereas the spruce has somewhat of a whitish or even a grayish tinge to it. This is a very young balsam fir, but as the tree ages, it will take on a very distinctive Christmas tree shaped form. In fact, this species is actually one that is very, very commonly used for commercial Christmas trees. So many of you have probably seen a balsam fir before, may have even had one right in your home. Balsam fir is found in a wide variety of habitats in Southern Ontario. It's not a particularly common tree, but it can be found anywhere where there's a shady mixed forest. So this tree right here is an Eastern white cedar. So the needles of the cedar are fairly rich green color and they're quite flat. So unlike our other coniferous trees, they're not round and a little bit pointed. They're very distinctly flat and have a somewhat scaly appearance to them. The wood of the Eastern white cedar is very resistant to rot. As a result, it has been used for things like cedar fences to mark the boundaries of properties and keep livestock in as well as cedar shingles, which would go around things like houses and even lighthouses to protect them from the elements because the cedar shingles would last a very long time and not rot. These are the cones on our Eastern white cedar. They have these small, slightly winged seeds come out. These seeds are very, very light and they're very flat. So when they exit the cones, they can be dispersed quite far by the wind. They're also quite a popular source of food for some species of animals. The tree behind me is an eastern red cedar, also called a juniper tree. The bark of the red cedar is grayish and has a peeling texture to it, and it tends to grow in a sort of conical form like some of our other conifers. Now, unlike some of the ones we've looked at, it prefers drier conditions, and it also tends to grow in the open rather than in the shade of a woodland. The needles of this tree are rounded and also look somewhat scaly, just like the white cedar, but they tend to be a much darker green. You'll also notice that, unlike some of the other conifers, its cones are almost berry-like and have a sort of bluish-gray texture to them. 